Hello and welcome to Talking with Famous People. I am Jose Eric. And I'm Jose Talking with Famous People. And we're going to talk today about brain stuff, in particular, the following topic. It, a combo topic of brain uh, architecture, also of network topology, also of small world systems as a defining nature of cognition and as a meaningful metric by which we can determine whether somebody's cognition is more or less efficient. So, I'm Googling right now. I'm going to put up on the screen. Let me turn off my camera and put up on the screen because I went away from the page that I was on before. Googling right now, small world systems and cognition. And what pops up at first is this scholarly articles here. And so this one, cognition is related to resting state, small world, blah. And then, if you look in the Google Scholar results, now, all right. So I've, I've clicked two links here. This one says uh, Adaptive Reconfiguration of Fractal Small World Human Brain Functional Networks. And the, if the other one I clicked was called Cognition is Related to Resting State Small World Network Topology. And Magnetoencephalographic Study. A Magnetoencephalographic Study. I don't know what that means, but it's a very big word. Okay, so cognition is related. This is the first thing I'm going to read is the abstract on this. It's just a paragraph. Brain networks and cognition have recently begun to attract attention. So studies suggest that more efficiently wired resting state brain networks are indeed correlated with better cognitive performance. Small world brain networks combine local segregation with global integration, hereby subserving information processing. Furthermore, recent studies implicate that gender effects may be present in both network dynamics and its correlations with cognition. This study reports on the relation between resting state functional brain topology with overall and domain specific cognitive performance and healthy participants and possible gender differences herein. Healthy participants underwent neuropsychological tests of which individual scores were converted to Z scores. Network analysis was performed on resting state eyes closed magnet magnet that word again data after determining functional connectivity between each pair of sensors. The clustering coefficient local specialization average path length path length overall integration and efficiency, and small world index, i.e. ratio between clustering and path length, were calculated in six frequency bands. 14 males and 14 female participants were included. Better total cognitive performance was related to increased local connectivity in the theta band, higher clustering coefficient in delta and theta bands, and higher small worldedness in theta and lower gamma bands. Women showed less clustering and shorter path length in the delta band. There were no significant correlations between network topology and cognitive functioning in females. In contrast, higher cognitive scores in men were associated with increased theta band clustering and small worldness. These results provide further evidence for the value of functional brain network topology for cognitive functioning and suggest that gender is an important factor in this respect. Now I want to define small world thing so that we um, we can have a better understanding of what we're talking about and then I'll say a couple things about that and I'm going to ask you guys to answer a couple questions see if you guys know the answers so I don't have to research it and we'll go as, it, as indicated before the video started. This says here about small world brain networks. Many complex networks have a small world topology characterized by dent, dense local clustering or clickishness of connections between neighboring nodes, yet a short path length between any distinct pair of nodes due to the existence of relatively few long range connections. This is an attractive model for the organization of brain anatomical and functional networks because a small world topology can bo support both segregated, specialized, and distributed integrated information processing. Moreover, small world networks are economical, tending to minimize wiring costs while supporting high dynamical complexity. The authors introduce some of the key mathematical concepts in graph theory 
required for small world analysis and review how these methods have been applied to quantification of cortical connectivity matrices derived from anatomical tract tracing studies in the macaque monkey and the cat. Um, they did this, it was a behavioral observation study. The cat and the monkey were playing a game of Parcheesi and that's how they determine these things. The evolution of small world networks is discussed in terms of a selection pressure to deliver cost-effective information processing systems. The authors illustrate how these techniques and concepts are increasingly being applied in the analysis of human brain functional networks derived from blah, that fucking word again, and MRI elements. Finally, the authors consider the relevance of small world models of understanding the emergence of complex behaviors and the resilience of brain systems to pathological attack by disease or aberrant development. They conclude that small world models provide a powerful and versatile approach to understanding the structure and function of human brain systems. Okay, so what I want to say about this before I open up to the floor here is specifically that uh, when we're talking about these small world systems, the thing in the brain is it, it's, it's very similar to the way we have computer systems structured, which is you don't have one program that has all the things you do in your browser. You have a browser that's sort of a base program, and you've got a bunch of extensions and apps and shit like that to localize out those processing requirements to uh, small world nodes. So basically, according to most the most recent research that I can find, as I was Googling and looking at this shit in general, this is a much better way to understand what parts of the brain do. It's not about, oh, this region does that, even though we can, we can basically say, okay, yeah, sort of, but really what's happening is you're saying the interactivity of various small nodes in this area do, do co combine to do that package of stuff, okay? So I am going to just leave it at that and open it up with a question. I, what I don't know and haven't researched yet at all, I don't understand what the, uh, the theta bands, delta bands, I don't, I've just simply, I've heard those terms for my whole life, I have no idea what they mean actually. So if anybody wants to go and explain that to me, that would be a good place to start. So I will open it, I will start at the top and move down. So that means Eric INFJ, I would love to hear any comments you have about this matter, this important matter of poo. What? If you don't have any comments, that's fine. If you do, I'm going to the bottom of chat right now. Looks like a journal article. Yeah, I wrote that in my journal last night. Dear journal, Bobby looked at me with the funniest look today. I think he likes me. That's where I got it from. Uh, oh, I could, I could put the link in here if need be. Yes, I know you did, James. I know you meant that. I was playing a trick on you. I've tricked you, didn't I? Yeah. I made a funny joke and James fell for it. He thought, I really had a diary that I was telling the story of Bobby looking at me and saying, I think you're beautiful, Eric. I'll put this link here. Here's a pew 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 pew. Here's a pew pew pew. And I will also put this other link. Here's a pew 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 pew. Here's a pew pew pew. All right. So these this basically what we're talking about here is there's one stuff that says this is how probably brain networks work, and there's other stuff that says brain work networks work better when they're more like this in certain capacities. Okay. But my perception of it is that what people are, are almost not studying yet at all or not considering or factoring in enough in the contemporary thing is the way that the long range connections interplay in the system as a whole. So having the capacity to go not via node but from one node to a distant node directly is an aspect of cognition that people with quote unquote ADHD supposedly have more of rather than less of. And uh, my basic intention is that these sort of disorder quote unquote 
our brain configurations, th at least ODD is, is not even that. ODD is just ridiculous, but ADHD is a, a given brain configuration called ENTP, ENFP, or whatever else you want to call it. Basically, those are names for the types that display ADHD-ish behaviors, which is to say, extroverted perceivers who aren't necessarily very cooperative. So, thoughts? I take it that Eric INFJ didn't have any thoughts. Uh, Hami? Hami INTJ? Okay, James? Lil Rinswalker? Mega bro. Anybody know about theta waves, delta waves, gamma waves? It's hard to make a gen. I, well, I'm asking about the the different kind of brain waves. I said if you, if you don't if you don't have any observations on what we've read so far, that's fine. I understand you're saying you. I don't really have a lot to say until I. I'm gonna withhold judgment until I see more information. Right? Fair enough. But can you? I know. I have almost zero information. I except in my brain now that I sort of look in there on these delta bands I know that this maybe has something to do with sleeping or something like some band is more common in sleeping can you, anybody explain brain waves to me different, different varieties of brain waves mega bro you might know about that sort of thing Tron Gerol, do you know give me thoughts we've got INTJ INTJ INTP INTJ INFJ James I don't know what type you are You're an INF poo? Oh, I didn't know that type existed. Okay, well, that's going to end this video. It's a brief introductory video to the topic. On the next video, I'll make some more general connections here, more links that might, uh, might entice my guests here to just be a bit more. Fucking fly, I hope you died. Stupid fucking flies. I hate them so much, they want to land on my feet. Uh, oh, phone caller? Are you? Oh, you're, I didn't see your name in here. Do you have any comments on this phone caller? Or is that Taylor? Uh, I have no comments except I hate flies as well. <laughs> yeah, they're awful. Okay, so I'm going to end this video and we're going to pursue to, to talk about some of this thing as well. Actually, let me add this last little bit of reading before we end this video of reading things. This this thing here is about fractal small world human brain functional networks and the adaptive reconfiguration thereof that sounds like a party brain function depends on adaptive self-organization of large-scale neural assembly assemblies but little is known about quantitative network parameters governing these processes in humans here we describe the topology and synchronizability the topology and synchronizability of frequency specific brain functional networks using wavelet decomposition of magnetoencephalographic time series followed by construction and analysis of undirected graphs. Magnetos encephalographic study data were acquired from 22 subjects. Shut up. Shut up, Creative Cloud. Um, they were acquired from 22 subjects, half of whom performed a finger tapping task, whereas the other half were studied at rest. We found that brain functional networks were characterized by small world properties at all six wavelet scales considered, corresponding approximately to classical five, low and high, whatever that thing is. Here, let me show you guys what I'm reading. I forgot to do that. All right, what are these symbols here? I don't know. What's this called? You guys see these things? This, this must stand for like delta, gamma, that kind of thing. I'll copy and see if I can paste them. Hey, it pastes. One of those epsilon is the is the circle with a line through it. Epsilon it looks kind of like an E. 
is that epsilon at big boy and yeah I want some frequency bands global top global topological parameters path length clustering were conserved across scales most consistently in the frequency range 2 to 37 Hertz implying a scale invariant or conserved a, a scale invariant or fractal small world organization global topical global topolo global topological parameters path length clustering were conserved across scales most consistently in the frequency range 2 to 37 Hertz implying a scale invariant or fractal small world organization dynamical analysis analysis showed the networks were located close to the threshold of order disorder transition in all frequency bands the highest frequency yeah I want some network had greater synchronizability greater clustering of connections and shorter path length than networks in the scaling regime of lower frequencies behavioral state did not strongly influence global topology or synchronizability however motor task performance was associated with emergence of long-range connections in both big boy and yeah I want some networks long-range connectivity e.g. between frontal and parietal cortex at high frequencies during a motor task may facilitate sensory motor binding human brain functional networks demonstrate a fractal small world architecture that supports critical dynamics and task related spatial reconfiguration while preserving global topological parameters so in other words change is localized you can't you can't fuck up the whole system if one Christmas light breaks it doesn't matter the whole rest of things are going to be fine right that's one of the impacts of this setup another one of the impacts of this setup is that uh, <laughs> it says it's fractal which means what they mean by fractal is and this is a much better word than fractal I like this word better because it actually says something it's scale invariant that means it doesn't matter if it's a super small version of it or a super big version of it the ratios are the same at any level so the metaphysical implications of that are Tell me I have to work through. I, I just read that for the first time. That was the best one to read by far. I'm really glad I read that. Anybody want to comment on that? If not, I'll stop this video. I need to think about that. I don't really have any, I have to think about it more. You probably feel the same way with that one. It's curious. Really curious. There's a lot there. Fucking flies. God. I just want you to die so badly. I want you to suffer too. I want to kill you slowly if I could. Fucking, I mean, it's, it's torturing me. It's fair. I, I, I'm not landing on them, right? Do you see me going around landing on flies all the time? I don't go in and say, aha, good, there's some flies over here. I'm going to go kill them. I kill them when they land on me. Fucking flies. All right, that's it for this video. Seriously though, flies are are some, one of the many things that's wrong with the universe. 